All right, class. So last time we talked about stoichiometry and limiting reagent, right? We said usually we have a couple of reagent and we have to figure out based on each one how much product you can make to figure out what's the max you can make, right? And, and sometimes we run out of one of them and that would be my limiting reagent, the other one would be excess reagent. Now today what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about percent yield, percent yield. I'm going to give you the equation for percent yield, then I'm going to give you a non-chemistry example to kind of explain what percent yield is. Because percent yield is made over max times 100%. So is made over max times 100. That's your percent yield. So now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me give you a non-chemistry example, another baking example, usually not a good idea. So let's say I want to make cupcakes. I go and I buy enough material, enough stuff like flour and eggs and whatever you make cupcakes with to make 100 cupcakes, okay? So I went out and I buy all the cupcake stuff. So I have enough stuff to make 100 cupcakes. So far so good. So what's the max I could make? I can make 100 cupcakes with all this stuff, all the ingredients that I've got. So I've got enough ingredients to make 100 cupcakes. I start making them. I drop some of them. Uh, some of them is going to be burnt. Some of them are going to be underbaked. If you know me, you'll know that's very possible. So what I end up with, I end up with 80 edible cupcake. What is my percent yield? So the max I could have made based on the ingredients that I had was 100. How much did I actually make? How many edible cupcake I had was 80. 80 divided by 100 times 100 is 80%. That makes sense? Okay. So just because you have this much ingredients doesn't mean you can always make the max that you could because stuff accidents happen. Sounds fair? So that's percent yield. Based on the ingredients, this is how much you could make, but doesn't mean you're going to make the max amount because accidents could happen, you could mess up, you could burn some of them. So your percent yield is how much you actually make. All right, now let's do this with a chemistry example. Now that hopefully you understand the concept of percent yield, let's look at a chemistry example. You ready? Okay, so again, made over max. Every time you see a percent yield, I want you to write that down, is made over max. Here is our first problem. When 100.0 gram of N2 and 25.0 grams of H2 are mixed, comma, 28.96 grams of ammonia is formed. We talked about NH3 is ammonia, is a weak base. What is the percent yield, okay? And our equation is, I have N2 plus H2 goes to NH3, and they're all gases. I guess I should put them down. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to balance this equation. So I'm gonna put a two over here, and I put a three over here. So far, so good. All right. Now I see this problem. The first thing that's going to stand out to me is that okay, they're asking me what is the percent yield. They're asking me what is the percent yield. So the first thing I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down the equation for percent yield. We said percent yield is made over max times one hundred. Is made over max. Okay. Now, when you read this question, when you read this question, they say that you take 100 grams of N2 
and then you take 25 grams of H2, you mix them together, and you end up forming 28.96 grams of ammonia. What is the percent yield? So in this problem, if I'm asking you for percent yield, that means I have to give you the main and I have to give you the max. You can't have more than two variables, right? You can't have more than one variable. So if I'm asking you for percent yield, I'm asking you for percent yield. You have to have the main, you have to have the max. So far so good, okay. Now, what is the main in this problem? What is the made in this problem? They tell you, you made 28.96 grams of the product, which is ammonia. So my made is 28.96 grams. You follow that? Because that's how much ammonia, which is my product, is formed. So 28.96 grams of ammonia is formed. That's my made. Now, I need the max also. I need the max also. Now, what is my max? I need to calculate that. How do I calculate this? Before you answer that, I'm going to reread this problem to you. And then hopefully you'll know right away what I'm talking about. So I have 100 grams of N2 and I have 25 grams of H2. How do I know what is the max ammonia I can make. Starts with L, limiting the agent. So I know I have 100 grams of N2, and I know I have 25 grams of H2. What I need to figure out is what is the max ammonia I can make. It's a limiting reagent, okay? It's a limiting reagent problem. So I'm gonna figure out, based on N2, how much ammonia I can make, Based on H2, how much ammonia I can make, and I can pick this smaller number. This is exactly the same thing as we've done in the past. So, let's do this. So, geometry, you ready? You notice, I have 100.0 grams of N2, okay? Now, grams is not what I want. I'm going to go a little faster here because I know you guys know this pretty well. I'm going to convert it to moles. One mole of N2 is 28 grams, okay? So I'm going to cancel out the grams. Now I have moles, but moles of N2 is not what I want. What I'm trying to figure out is moles of ammonia. So what do I need to do? Hashtag mole ratio. So the moles of N2 is not what I'm interested in. What I want is moles of ammonia. So I have to do a mole ratio. Now, how do I do a mole ratio? Coefficients are the mole ratio. Coefficients are the mole ratio. So I have two moles of ammonia for every three moles of H2. L. One moles of N2. Okay. So two ammonia for one moles of N2. You guys are good. Once I confuse egg out of you, yeah. Okay, so coefficient of the mole ratio. Now what I have, I have, so the moles of N2 can cancel out. I have moles of ammonia, which I want, but I'm gonna go all the way to grams. That's for me much easier. So one mole of ammonia is 17 grams. So I'm gonna do this, and what I end up getting is 221.4 grams. 121.4 grams of ammonia. So, based on N2, that's how much ammonia I can make. Now, I want to do the same thing. I want to do the same thing with H2, right? Again, we've done this many times. You know that. Gram is going to get me nowhere. What I'm going to do, I'm going to convert grams to moles We're using molecular weight, right? One mole of H2 is 2.0 grams. So I'm going to cancel out the grams over here. Now I have moles of H2. And again, your molecular weight might be slightly different. The, the, the periodic table I used wasn't the, the best. Um, it was rounded numbers. So I don't want the moles of H2. It's going to go down here. What I want on top is moles of ammonia. 
So far, so good. Again, because H2 is not what I want, what I want is ammonia. Now, look at the equation for me and tell me, what's the mole ratio between ammonia and H2? What was it? Come one more time. What is the mole ratio? And everyone tell me, what's the mole ratio between ammonia and H2? Coefficients are the mole ratio. Coefficients are the mole ratio. It's 2 to 3. 2 to 3 because coefficients are the mole ratio. This is great. So I don't have moles of H2. I have moles of ammonia, which is what I want. And then the last thing I need to do, I need to convert it to grams. One mole of ammonia is 17 grams. So what I end up getting is 142 grams of ammonia based on H2. All right, now you tell me. Now you tell me. Based on N2, I got 121.4 grams of ammonia. Based on H2, I got 142 grams of ammonia. So what's the max ammonia I can make? The max ammonia I can make is this smaller number. Exactly. This is the max ammonia I can make because N2 is my limiting reagent. Because N2 is my limiting reagent. You follow me so far? Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to come up here. My mate, they told me how much I made. For how much I could have actually made was 121.4 grams. And I'm going to times it by 100. I do have to do 4 sig fig because that was 4 sig fig. And this is 4 sig fig. I get 23.85%. 23.85%. That's my percent yield. Is that a good percent yield? No. So if once you graduate and get a job and get out of here, if you have that percent yield in your job, you probably need to find a new job, right? Um, it's hard. It's hard to get a 100% in chemistry because there's there's a lot going on. There's so many steps sometimes. There's side reaction. So it's really hard to get a 100% yield. But you shouldn't get 23%. That's kind of low too. That means you wasted a lot of material and a lot of reagent, right? Because the max you could have made was 121 and you only made 28. It's not good. All right. So far, so good, and hopefully you are understanding the concept of this. Hopefully you are understanding the concept of percent yield. Um, ready to do one more practice problem? Let's do, Let's do a practice problem. I might actually do two if you guys stay with me. Alrighty, so here is a problem. If 5.2 grams of calcium is mixed with excess O2 and 4.0 grams of calcium oxide is collected what is the percent yield what is the percent yield and here is I have calcium plus O2 goes to calcium oxide, okay? I'm actually going to balance this for you because I'm a nice person sometimes. Um, I have two oxygen, I'm going to add a two here, so two oxygen, two oxygen, I have two calcium and two calcium. You ready to do this? Okay, but you, you pause me, you do this, and then unpause me, and let's go over it. 
So in this problem, I see percent yield. I go, well, every time I see percent yield, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say made over max. What is made over max? I see percent yield, so what I'm going to say is made over max. Okay? Okay. So that's good. That's made over max. Now, the other thing I need to think about this is that, okay, let's read the question. I'm asking you for percent yield. Now, because I'm asking you for percent yield, that means the maid and the max, they both have to be given, right? Because I ask you for percent yield, that means the maid and the max, they both have to be given. Are they given? Let's hope so. You should, right? You cannot have more than one variable. When you read this, it says that this is my product, right? Calcium oxide is my product. And it said 4.0 gram is collected. So what is my maid? My maid is 4.0 grams of calcium oxide. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to explain this one more time, just to make sure you really understand the concept. So I take calcium and I add it to oxygen. I mix them together. The reaction happens and I form calcium oxide. Now I want to figure out what is the percent of this calcium of percent yield of this calcium oxide, right? The same way, think about uh, you bought a bunch of stuff, you bought two ingredients, you mix them together, and you make some sort of food, and you want to know how much food you were able to make, right? Like the cockpit example. Now, so my product is calcium oxide, and I made 4.0 grams of calcium oxide. Now, the question is, how much, what was the max calcium oxide I could have made? And did I make that? We're good? Okay. So now, how do I do that? It would be kind of a limiting reagent type of problem to figure out, based on the reagent, what was the max calcium oxide I could make. Now, when I come here, in this problem, I made it a little easy for you. Don't get used to it. I said 5.2 grams of calcium is mixed with excess O2. So I already told you what's the limiting reagent. What is my limiting reagent? That means my, I say this is excess. If this is excess, my limiting reagent is calcium. Yeah, I made it a little easy for you. So my limiting reagent is calcium. Now this is a little bit easier, right? Now I can calculate what's the max calcium oxide I need based on my calcium. So let's do this. I have 5.2 grams of calcium, right? I have 5.2 grams of calcium. Anyway, grams is not going to get me anywhere. What do I need to do? I need to convert it to two moles. One mole of calcium is 40 grams, okay? So then the grams can cancel out. Now I have moles of calcium. But again, what I'm trying to figure out is how much calcium oxide I can make. I have calcium, I'm trying to figure out calcium oxide. So what do I have to use? Hashtag mole ratio. Because the moles of calcium is not what I want. What I'm trying to figure out is a percent yield of calcium oxide. Now, if you look at the equation, what is my mole ratio? Coefficients are the mole ratio. It's two to two. I have need two moles of calcium to make two moles of calcium oxide. So far, so good. Okay. So then the moles of calcium cancels out. I have calcium oxide, which is what I want. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go convert it to grams because I want grams. One mole of calcium oxide, so the moles can cancel out, is 56 grams. Okay. So then that can cancel out. I know the grams. I have two sig fig, so it will be 7.3 grams. It will be 7.3 grams. All right, that's perfect. So this is the max I could make because I know that calcium is my limiting reagent. I'm going to come over here, put 7.3 grams over here. Now times the 100%. I have two sick fig, so what I end up getting is 51, 55%. 55%.
55%. This is a little better. You probably will keep your job for another month or two. A little better percent yield, right? It's a little better percent yield. How do you guys feel about this? Good? Okay, we need to do one more problem. I was, I was going to stop here, but no, you don't want me to, right? Let's do one more problem. Yeah? Okay. Again, percent yield is made over max. Sometimes you have to figure out what the max is. Now, let's go over one more problem. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Three point eight zero gram of magnesium nitride is mixed with three point three zero grams of H two O. And 3.60 gram of magnesium oxide is formed. What is the percent yield of MgO? And here's my equation. My equation is. Magnesium nitride plus water will form ammonia plus MgO. Okay, now what I want you guys to do, I want you first let's balance this equation, right? Let's balance this equation. Um, so I have 3 mg here, I'm going to add 3 over here, so now my mg will balance out. Um, I have 2 nitrogen here, so I'm going to add 2 over here, and then, then I'm going to have 6 hydrogen over there, so what am I going to do? Add 3 over here, and then the oxygen will be balanced out. So far so good? Okay. Now, again, the same thing as before. I go, they said percent yield. I'm going to write down percent yield is made over max times 100%. Is made over max. And in this question, I have magnesium nitride is one of my reagents. I want to add it to water, mix them together, and then these two products are formed. They're asking me what is the percent yield of MgO, of this product. Okay? Now, when you read the question, do they tell you how much is made? Yeah. I want percent yield, so these two has to be given. Now, what is made, they say 3.60, 3.60 grams of MgO is made. You guys are good so far? Okay. So, 3.60 grams of MgO is made. Now, the question is, what was the max we could make? Let's go over this one more time. Just one more time. These are my two reagents. I'm going to mix them together and I make these two products. The question asks you for MgO. What's the percent yield of MgO? They said what they did after they mix this together and the reaction happened, they got 3.60 grams of MgO was formed. That's my mate. But now the question is we need to also figure out what was the max we could have made? What was the max we could have made? Now, you know how to do this problem. We have 300 0.80 grams of magnesium nitride and we have 3.30 grams of water. So what I'm going to do, I want to use a limiting reagent to figure out based on each one how much MgO I could make and I pick the smaller number for max, right? You've seen this before. So let's do this together. So I have 
0.80 grams of magnesium nitrate. What I'm trying to figure out is how much MgO, what's the max MgO I can make. Now again, gram is going to get me nowhere, right? Because I need a mole ratio. So one mole of magnesium nitride is 101 gram. So the grams can cancel out. Now I can do a mole ratio because I'm not trying to figure out magnesium nitride. What I want is MgO. You guys are following me so far? Okay, we've seen this before. Grams to moles. Now I can do a mole ratio to cancel this out. Coefficients are the mole ratio. Coefficients are the mole ratio. What is my mole ratio over here? My ratio is three, and this is just one, is three to one, okay? All right, now I'm actually gonna go all the way to gram. You could stop here and then compare the moles and then go to grams, but while I'm on a row, I'm gonna go all the way to grams. So now, when you go to gram, you can go from moles to gram using molecular weight. One moles of MgO is 40, 0.3 grams so then the moles can cancel out what I end up with what I end up with I get 4.55 grams of MgO 4.55 grams of MgO so far so good now what am I going to do we've done this before based on magnesium nitride I can make 4.55 grams of MgO now I'm going to see based on the water how much MgO can I make you tell me you know how to do this you see grams what are you going to do convert it to two moles okay using molecular weight again gram goes down here and I'm I'm going a little faster here because we've done this before and I know you know it. So grams goes down here using molecular weight. I convert it to moles. Now I don't want H2O. So moles of H2O goes here. What I want, I want MgO. Coefficients are the mole ratio. Coefficients are the mole ratio. Three to three. Coefficients are the mole ratio. Okay. And I'm going to go all the way to grams so it's easier for me. One mole of MgO is 40.3 grams. Again, you can stop right here. You can stop at moles. You can also compare the moles to see which one has the less moles and then convert that one to grams. Or you can just go all the way to grams. Um, so to make it a little bit easier. So the moles cancel out in the mole ratio, mole to gram. Now I have grams of MgO. If I do this, 360, 7.38, 7.38 grams of MgO. Now you tell me, what's the max MgO I can make? Based on magnesium nitride, 4.55. Based on H2O, 7.38. My limiting reagent is? Yes. Magnesium nitride is my limiting reagent. So this is the max I can make. This is the max I can make. I'm gonna come over here. Put the max 4.55 grams. Mm, not bad. The max is 4.55 grams. I made 3.60 grams times 100%. I get 79.1%. Okay, keep in your job. We got percent yield, right? That's my percent yield. All right, this was a big lecture. I made it a lot of practice problems. So percentile is made over max, is made over max. Just because this is a max you could make when you actually go to lab and start making it, doesn't mean you're gonna make the maximum amount because a lot of accidents happen, sometimes there's side reactions, you lose some when you're transferring. So this is how much you actually make and how much you could have made. Times 100, that is your percent yield. Okay, nice job. Go ahead and get in there. I'll talk to you guys next time.